want to speak today on a topic called one touch. All it takes is just one touch from the Lord. All it takes is you to reach out and touch Him. And things are going to change in your life. Amen. Amen. So before we welcome the man of God, I want to remind ourselves that the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. Those are the words Paul said affirming the power that he saw in the gospel. So if the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God that brings salvation to whoever believes from the Jew, from the Jew to the Greek it means a Gentile who is not a Greek. A a that means that gospel can never get old. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ never changes, even his gospel does never change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he transformed the people of, uh, in the time of Paul, whenever Jesus can never change, the same gospel can transform whoever believes in it. Who believes in the word of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the, even though you may not believe it, that will never reduce the power of the gospel. The, why, uh, the reason why we speak of it, it is because it transformed in our lives. We did not receive a religion, but we received the gospel that contains the power of God, that brings salvation, that changes history. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That can work in the, in, the, in the present and the time to come. The gospel is always accompanied by the signs and wonders. Had it been just a normal speech, it can never do anything in your life. But as long as it is the, is the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has something good that it brings to there you. There are things that it plants there in you. There are things that it changes in you. There are things that it destroys in you. And there are things that it builds in you. There are things that it uproots from you. And there are the things that it plants in you. Because that's the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is a hammer. The word of God is a sword. The word of God is fire. You will tell yourself, me, I can't be changed. You can't be changed. Things of your words can never be touched. You always try to defy the gospel. No one was had to be changed as Saul. But Saul was meant to be Paul. Saul was transformed by the power of the gospel. So the gospel can never fail. Because God himself believes in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Iman era vugusimit. God made a medicine. Umuti okuvura ubugome kungana umun. A medicine to quench the uh, the wickedness of a man. Did you understand? Iman era vugusumuti. God made a medicine. Umu laboratory ay. From his laboratory. Wogu kizu ubugome kungana umun. To treat the wickedness of a son of man. So after having made it. From his laboratory. God himself said. 
this medical da wizera mu buryo i believe is to the extent hallelujah hallelujah mu buryo aho baza ukoresha nkuko byanditswe ku mikoreke ku mikoreshereze yawo to the extent wherever it will be muna yo bwa muti muri boate haba harimo uko ukoresha so you see whenever you receive a medicine or any tablet you have a pathology uh, they will put a catalog of things that you can nimba umuti utakoze when a uh, approved medicine had not worked mungwara wagenewe uh, to uh, to treat a, spe- uh, a specific disease or sickness nokuvuga ngo nago bakurikije pathology nago bakurikije uko wawukoze yanditse ukiye gukorwa it means they didn't follow the instructions of the one who made it. They told you to take two uh, two tablets in the morning. And two in uh, the midday uh, uh, the other two in the evening. And because you want to be smarter than the one who made the right medicine. You will take one tablet instead of two. And uh, at the midday you take a half of it. In the evening you don't even take anything. And you will take a half of it. And you will tell yourself that the medicine ah, is fake. The one who made that medicine trusted it. Hallelujah. Amen. Le pharmacien croit à son médicament. The pharmacist he believed in his medicine. That's the same way with the gospel. The one who made the gospel. The one who proved it. The one who proved it. He believes that it works. And he even provided the instructions on how to use it. For those who are not changed by the gospel having heard of it does not mean that the gospel is fake but the gospel is the gospel believed by the owner but you have to change if you are really following the instruction you have to follow if the one who made it you are following the instructions he said as I conclude, I want to tell you what he said. I am the John the Baptist. I'm not about to baptize. I'm just preparing a way for the one behind me. <laughs> so the word was this. He said, My word was proved seven times. My word was proved seven times. And seven is the number of God. It, it means the fullness. The one which La is full. The fullness. Hallelujah. Amen. La perfection. The perfection. The number seven. It means nothing is lacking. Seven spirits, Amasarindui. seven eyes, uh, the lampstand, is, uh, lampstand, seven lampstands, seven stars, seven, seven, seven. It means the number seven. And this word was proved seven times before God he sent it in the world to heal. The one who is not healed by it. It is because he's not following the instructions. There are things in him which are not according to the one who made it. But for those who took the medicine from God, having followed the instructions of the owner, they confirm as Paul did that the gospel is the power of God that brings salvation to whoever believes from a Jew having law having religion up to the Gentile who does not have a law who worships idols I want to tell you this. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a message to the terrain. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a message that works all the way. 
It's a gospel that works in every kind of field. Uh, when they say like a, 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 a car that, is, that can work in whatever kind of a field, it means it can go... It can go to the same place, you understand? It can go to the same place, it can go to the same so that's a mumisozi mubibaya ha igehanyerera that's a kind of a car that can walk through every kind of road either rough dusty roads sliding roads um, or mountainous roads whatever kind of a car uh, 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 road. so that kind of a car you can be driven and can never Donc be stopped de Jesus Christ est tout terrain. so that means that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be through any kind. that's why you see the gospel can transform a heart, can transform a drunkard can transform a, a, a thief, can transform a murderer can even transform a religion not only that, but also can even transform the one with good manners. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's welcome the man of God with a big round of applause to God. Pastor Gerald. Pastor Gerald. From South Africa. He is a servant of God in building the body of Christ. We welcome him with a round of applause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is great. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you on behalf of my wife and myself for the prayers offered for my son Joash. Amen. It Amen. Amen. I want to share with you the word of the Lord from the book of Mark chapter 5. We are going to read verses 28. I want to speak today on a topic called One Touch. All it takes is just one touch from the Lord. All it takes is you to reach out and touch Him. And things are going to change in your life. Amen. Let's read verse 28. Kuko yari yibwiye ati ninkora imyenda ye gusa ndakira amen. For she said if I touch but his hem of his garment I would be made whole. Today you must see I believe if you would just reach out and touch him. I believe that healing power from God will begin to move in your life. Now this portion of scripture is Jesus has come into this area and as soon as he arrives in the city, there was a Pharisee by the name of Jairus. He was one of the rulers in the synagogue. He came to see Jesus. Now I want you to understand this was not an ordinary thing. This was not a normal thing. Because the rulers of the synagogue were the ones that were wanting to look at killing Jesus. But Jairus today, he came to see Jesus. Because he needed something that he knew that the law could not teach him. 
that all of his wisdom about the law could not provide for him. He, he, he didn't come like Nicodemus by night. He came by day. He came because he had a problem that was so serious that it was affecting his life. I want you to know today that there are some men and women out there that are not Christians that are Muslim that are serving other gods but they know the power of Jesus Christ. And when they go through a struggle they're going to be coming running to the church. Jairus came running to Jesus because he knew his need was more important than what he believed. His need for the healing for his daughter was more important than his status in the community. There are some people that have some status in the community that is going to come running into the house of God. And I believe that they will experience the power of God in this place. Jairus says, please come to my house. Because my daughter is about to die. For every parent that is here today, if you know that your child is seriously sick, you will do anything to go and get some help for them. Jairus was operating like a normal father. He was going to get help for his daughter. And I liked what Jesus did. Jesus said to him, don't worry, I'm coming to your house. Jesus didn't worry about was he amongst the people that criticized him. Jesus didn't tell him you're, you're the one that was a ruler of the synagogue that is looking for faults with me. Jesus saw an opportunity to minister to a family to go, to go into a household and change that family. I pray today that you will get ready because there are some people that is going to come knocking on your door. There's some people that are going to come and say, would you come and pray with us? You may know them. You may know what they believe. But when you go into the house, things in the house is going to change. In the name of Jesus. So Jesus is walking with Jairus going towards his house. So it's normal for Jesus that wherever he went, the crowds gathered. And the Bible says, and the crowds was, was pushing on Jesus. Everyone wanted to be close to Jesus. Because they knew what he was doing. And they knew the power of God that was on his life. But the Bible says there was another lady. 
ariko biri yavuga ngo hari hari umugore that had a problem with the issue of blood yarafite ikibazo cyo kuva and she had this problem the bible said for 12 years bibiri yavuga ngo iki kibazo yarakimaranye imyaka 12 it this is not an easy illness to deal with ubu ntabwo ari uburwayi bworoheje wavura because this illness gets you to the place where you are weak kuko nuburwayi butumugera ahantu wumva ucitse intege that you become bent over ugahora usa nubamye the bible says she tried all of the doctors bibili ravuga ngo yagiye yagerageje abaganga bose the bible says she spent all her money bibili ravuga ngo atanga ibye byose but the bible says she got worse ariko bibili ravuga ngo akarushaho kuba nabi I believe that there are certain sicknesses. Ndizera ko hari uburwaye butandukanye that God can only divinely heal you from. Imana mu buryo bwayo ishobora kugukiza. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Nago vuga ngo ntuje kwivuza but I believe that Jesus Christ is our healer. Ariko nizera ko Yesu Kristo ari we mukiza wacu. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. Nizera mu mbaraga zikiza za Yesu. This lady tried everything. Uyu mugore yaragerageje ibintu bya ryo byose bishoboka. She spent all her money. Yari yaratanze ubutunzi bwe bwose. And then she decides Noneho afata umwanzu. I'm going to try Jesus. Goreka noneho ngeragereze no kuri Yesu. Turn to your neighbor said try Jesus. There are so many people in the church. That tries all of the other solutions first. But as a last resort comes to Jesus. Ariko igisubizo cyanyuma cyanya cyo giza kuri Yesu. This lady when she lost everything uyu mugore amaze gutakaza ibyo yarafite byose and there was no more hope for her kandi nta byiringiro yarasigaranye she said aravuga ngo if i would touch the hem of his garment ninda mukambashije gukora ku myenda ye i will be made well ndaza gukira she didn't want to meet him face to face nabwo yarakeneye kumureba mu masoko yandi she didn't want him to come and lay his hands on her nabwo yashakaga kuza ngo amurambire ibiganza bye she didn't want him to stand and talk to her nabwo yashaka ngo babonane bavugane na Yesu she said all i want to do is just touch the hem of his garment aravuga ngo icyo nifuza gusa nimbasha gukora kunshunda z'umwenda we he doesn't have to turn and look at me. Nabwo asingonga ko Yesu ahindukira ngo andebe. This was a lady uyu yari umugore who knew the seriousness of her problem. Wari uzu buremere bw'ikibazo yari afite. So there's two things happening at one time. Hari bintu bibiri biriho biraba cyarimwe. There's Jesus walking with Jairus going to Jairus's house Hari Yesu uri huragendana na Yairo berekeze iwe mu rugo and then there's the lady Hari numugore noneho that Jesus knows nothing about Yesu atazi bye but she heard about him Ariko yari yaramuyumvise And she said I'm going to just go and touch the hem of his garment Aravuga ngiye gusa gukora kunshunda ziri ya myenda ye She didn't doubt Nabwo yigeza shidikanya She said if I touch his garment yaravuze ngo nimbasha gukora ku myenda I'm going to be I'm going to be healed ndaza gukira She didn't say maybe I'm going to get healed Nabwo yavuze ngo ahari nakira She says I will get healed yaravuze ngo ndaza gukira The Bible said Bibiliya yavuze that she came between the crowd ngo yiyinjiye mu ruvange rw'abantu benshi This Jesus Yes, we are home. There's a whole crowd of people around him. Abantu benshi bari ba she is also coming through the crowd. Nawe agenda yinjira muri abo benshi. But the Bible says her condition didn't allow her to walk amongst the crowd. Ariko bibi yavuga ngo uko yarameze cyangwa uburwaye yarafite ntago bwamenye. But she was crawling through the crowd. Ntago bwamenye gakuza yemye ahubwo yagiye yunamye. But people may have been stamping on her. Birana shoboka ko abantu bamukandagira. But that didn't matter. Ariko ibyo ntacyo byari bimubwiye. They may have stood on her hand. Bashobora kuba baragukandagira kunwe kunokize ariko ibyo ntacyo because she 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 was hurting more kuko yababaraga kurushuka the physical pain that they could put on her yarababaraga kurushuka bashobaraga kumubabaza bamukandagira cyangwa bamubyiga people may have kicked at her harabashora kuba baramuteraga imigeri but she was still pushing 
She was going with the crowd. And then she touches the hem of his garment. And the Bible says immediately Jesus stood. Yes, And he looked around. And he asked a very unusual question. Who touched me? The disciples, I, I, I think it was Peter. Because he was always the one that will talk first. He says, Master, how can you ask a question like that? It's obvious. Everybody's touching you. No. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, No. Yes, oh, yeah. There's somebody touch me in a different way. Because when this person touched me, Kuko Angozeho. Power left my body. Yeah, in the church today, all of us can be worshiping God. But do we worship Him in such a way? Do we touch Him in such a way? That power leaves him. Amidst everybody touching him. Are you able to touch him in a way. power leaves him. And healing comes to your body. You see it's not about the numbers. It's about what you touch him. Is your need so great that you say, God, I need you to move in such a way in my life? I can't live like this anymore. And something must change. Something must be different. Would you touch Jesus in such a way that would make him stop? Bethel Church, Bethel. would you in your worship and in your praise, would you, would you touch God in such a way that would make him stop? Would it make him turn his face toward you? And take it, pay attention to your need. We know that the lady immediately was healed. So why did Jesus ask the question? Firstly, he asked the question to prove to the people that because you are close to me, it doesn't mean that power is moving into your life. You can be close to me, but you won't touch me. The second thing, he wanted to identify this lady. Why did he want to identify this lady? He wanted to identify this lady because she had a problem. And in Hebrew culture, if you had the problem the lady had, you were declared unclean. And you could not be in public. Secondly, whoever you touched, they also became unclean. So it meant if you were unclean, you could not go to pray. 
couldn't be part of certain things. But all that was happening was to help the faith of Jairus. Because Jairus believed in the law. And, and, he, and he knew that in, to, in order to fulfill the law, there are certain requirements. Jesus, by the virtue of she touching him, he became unclean. That's why the lady was afraid for him to pay attention to her. Because that behavior would not be welcomed in the society. And then Jesus asked, who touched me? And the lady, she said, it is me. She said, it is me. She was healed immediately. She could have kept quiet. But if you were healed from a problem that you had for 12 years, you don't worry about what other people care about. Because for you, this is such an important thing that you, that you want to testify. This is what I had. This is how he healed me. And immediately the lady said, it is I. And she said what her condition was. And Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. You see, sometimes we worry too much about what other people will think about us. And sometimes we do not get into our own miracle. Because it's so important what other people think about us. You know what you need. Go after it. Go after God. Don't worry about what your neighbor thinks. See, because your neighbor is not living with the problem you got. The neighbor doesn't have to deal with the challenges you have to deal with. You have to believe God. Then sometimes you have to believe God for yourself. You don't need other people to agree with you. There's other people are not standing with you. You gotta stand alone. Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. Straight after that, there was a messenger that came from the house of Jairus and said to Jairus, don't worry the master. Your daughter is dead. Jesus turns around to him immediately. And he says to him, don't be afraid. I'm coming to your house. Jesus didn't say to him, don't be sad. If someone in your family dies, you are not afraid. You are sad. Why did Jesus say, don't be afraid? Because he should have said, don't be sad. Or oh, don't worry. He said, don't be afraid. Because he knew that this was a fear in the heart of the, of the father. 
He always had the thought in his heart. If Jesus doesn't come in time. My daughter will die. Sometimes there are certain things that we fear. That paints a target for the enemy. And the enemy knows that if I if I begin to answer that fear, that person will lose their faith. Jesus was going to do something in the life of Jairus. Yes, But everything was working out. To prepare Jesus to go into the house. Because if you go to the house of someone that has died. That, that household is declared unclean. So in order to go into that unclean house. Jesus had to be unclean. There are some things that have been worked out in the heavens. Where God is working on some things. And preparing you for some things. That you don't understand. And you don't know what it is. But all things are working together for your good. All things are working together. So that the purposes of God can be fulfilled in your life. Because if Jesus was not touched by this woman. According to the law. He couldn't enter the house of Jairus. But some things happen. So that the will of God can be fulfilled. The woman in the story. Didn't have a name. Jesus didn't come there. To pray for her. She received what I call an on the way blessing. She got a blessing that she didn't expect. She didn't deserve. She didn't even mind. To get her on the way blessing. Amen. Amen. Some of us are going to get her on the way blessing. As you're walking. As you at home. As you at your job. God is going to start to do some supernatural things. You're going to get an on the way blessing. Amen. Amen. She didn't worry about, they didn't write her name in the Bible. Tell her what her family. Amen. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. And he comes to Jairus' house. And he takes Jairus into the house. And as he gets to the house, he sees a large crowd of people crying. The child died. Jesus walks into the house and he tells them don't cry. The child only sleeps. Everyone's crying. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they hear don't cry. She's sleeping. They start laughing. From crying to laughing. 
because what Jesus told them kukibyo yesa babwiye didn't make sense nago byumvikana I think Jesus that day was telling a lot of things that didn't make sense. Yes, ndibwira ko wa munsi yara yari wavuga ibintu bitatu. Yes, he asked who touched me. Bidasobanutse. Bwa mbere yabajije umukozeho. But isn't Jesus sometimes deliberate? Ese, Yesu nta nubwo ashyira mu gaciro rimwe na rimwe. Even when it doesn't make sense to you. Iyo nawe bidasobanutse. He's always right. Igihe cyose abari ukuri kuri we. Even if it doesn't make sense to everybody around you. Niyo bitumvikana ku bantu bose muri kumwe. He is always right. Wigiye cyose we abafite ari mukuri. Even if the grammar is wrong. Nubwo yakoresha imvuga itariyo. He is still right. Abari mukuri. When he asks you why you are afraid when you when he should be asking you why you said he is still right. Igiye akubaje ngo kubera cyo ufite ubwoba kandi yakaba yakubaje kubera cyo ufite agahinda abari mukuri. He turns around to the people and he says the child is not dead she's only sleeping. Because he's operating on a different dimension. He's not seeing from the level that we are seeing. He's not operating from the level that we are operating. Because in the eyes of God, there is something about to happen. And the child is just sleeping. Life may have left her. Ubuzima bwari bwamuvuyemo. She may have not be breathing anymore. Ashobora kuba taranahumekaga. She a body may have gotten cold. Ubumubiriwe ushobora kuba yatangiye gukonja. But according to heaven, ariko mwijuruho, she is only sleeping. Baravuga ko asinziriye. Jesus had to clear the house. Yesu yagombaga guhumanura iyo nzu. Of all of the unbelievers. Yikwirukana agakuramo ukutizera kose. He had to clear the house of all the people that were unbelieving. He took Jairus and his wife and he took Peter, James and John with him. And he went into the room of this little girl. Sometimes we've got too many people in our lives. And there are some people that are unbelieving. Sometimes you have to get rid of the unbelieving people from your life. So that a miracle can take place in your life. Because You wondering why God is not doing certain things in your life? It's because you've got some people that are doubting whether God can do this or not. We need people that have faith. Who knows what we are going through? And knows that it's, it is only possible by the hand of God. For things in our life to change. And then Jesus does an extraordinary thing. He takes the girl by the hand. And he says, Talite kumi. Saying, little girl, arise. And immediately, life came into the body of that child. And she came alive. Amen. Amen. I want to speak into your life today. Into that impossible situation that you are facing. And we saying the same words that Jesus said, Talite kume. Let it arise. Go Amen. The Bible says then Jesus gave the daughter to the parents. And, and he said, give us something to eat. 
And then he says another strange thing. Hanyuma nanone avuga ikindi kintu kidasanzwe. He says, "Don't go tell anybody." Aravuga ngo ntagire what happened here. Numwe ubwira ibyabereye hano. How do you hide? Ni gute wahisha? A girl was dead. Umukobwa yari yapfuye. Now she's walking around. How do you tell, don't tell anybody what happened here? Huh? But you have to understand it from the original text. In the original Aramic, Translation, it says it like this. The words talite kumi was the Hebrew translation. But from the original Aramic language, the translation goes like this. It says, little girl, who is under the covering of the Almighty God. Almighty God says to you, rise up. Almighty God says to you, rise up. He was revealing who he was in the healing of the girl and death in the house of Jairus. The ruler of the synagogue was declaring, he was declaring who he was. He's saying, I am the almighty God. And I'm standing in your midst. And I'm speaking over this dead body. And the dead body will come alive in the name of Jesus. I'm here to say to you that same resurrection power that same miraculous power is in this place tonight. That same resurrection power that same healing power is in this place tonight. Therefore, it made sense what Jesus said. Don't tell everyone what you've seen here today. Because they weren't ready to see him as the Almighty God. The world was not ready to receive him as the Son of God. The world was not yet ready to see him in his glorified state. In the house of Jairus, in an unbelieving house, the glory of God was manifested. I'm declaring over Kigali that irrespective of where you are, even in the most unbelieving home, may the glory and the power of God flow through your life into the lives of other people so that they will be changed, so that they will be transformed, so that the resurrection power of God will take them out of death and bring them into life in Christ Jesus in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's just stand together tonight. All it took was one touch. The touch of the woman touching the hem of his garment, healing came. 
All it took was one touch from Jesus. And he raised up a dead daughter to life. All it is going to do is take one touch. Amen. Can the musicians come? I want to share with you something. This particular sermon is important to me. Because when I was born, I was born with a speech problem. I couldn't speak clearly. And my parents did not find that out till I went to school. The first year that I went to school, they found out that my speech problem was so bad that I could not be in normal school. And the teachers gave me a letter to take to my father. That said that I had to go to a special school for people that got speech problems. And the school was over an hour away from our town. And it would have meant that I had to stay away from my family. Now this, this happened. My father just a year before that. He gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. My father was my father and my mother were Hindu. Wahindi, yeah? In, in, bara bahinde. My father just gave his heart to the Lord. Anyuma papa arizera yizera ima yizera Kristo. Bara bahindu, abahindu ni bamwe and my father, I brought the letter and I came home. And I gave it to my father that evening. And my father took the letter in his hand. And in those days we didn't have telephones. So he went and he called a few of the neighbors that were Christian. And they came together and my father began to pray in the house. And my father said this to the Lord. He says, if you give my son back his speech, I will give him to you. That night my father prayed over me with few of the people from the neighborhood. He gave me the letter and he said, go and give it to your teacher the next day. So the next day I took the letter and I went back to school. And the teacher opened the letter and she said, did you give this letter to your father? And the teacher said, yes, I gave it to him. But she said he didn't sign the letter. I said, my father said, I must tell you. He's not signing the letter. Jesus healed me. Yes, we are. My teacher asked me, what did you say? 
I said, ma'am, my father said, Papa Yamgiye, he's not signing the letter. Jesus healed me. Yes, we are Jesus. And from that time, my speech was clear. Just one touch. You know, I grew up like a normal child. When I became of the age of 13 years old, I had a lot of questions about what we believe. And I went to my father. I said to him, how do you know that God exists? Because in the school they were telling us about evolution. And how we, came, how we came from monkeys and how there was a big bang. Now my father didn't have any education at school. My father learned how to read and write by reading his Bible. He turned around to me and he says, Boy, I don't know nothing about that evolution. Story. But the one thing I know, you couldn't speak. I prayed and Jesus gave you back your speech. I didn't need any other word. I didn't need any other understanding. And that's why I can speak. How do I know this is what God called me to? The area in your life the enemy has been trying to attack the most. It's part of the kingdom purpose for your life. The enemy was trying to take away my speech. Because he knew what I was born to do. What were you born to do? What is the enemy doing to stop you from that? Just one touch. It's going to change today. Today if you need healing. We want to pray specifically for people that need healing in their life. No matter what your condition is. I know he's the healer. I come to declare tonight that the Almighty God is in this place. His power is in this place. His healing power is in this place. And it's going to change your life. I'm going to call Apostle Francois. Amen. We bless you, Lord. He's going to lead us and I'm going to follow from there. Amen. Uh, we are before the Lord. Can you uh, perceive the other thing that the, the devil had killed? You can see what the devil had killed, what Jesus has to resurrect in this city. Just as he resurrected the daughter of Jair, 
he's going to resurrect the other thing which was dead for his glory to be manifested we have said that the gospel of God the gospel is the power of God the power that heals is the same power that resurrects where there are sick people they get healed as the other woman who was bleeding for 12 years either if it is other kind of things in your life that the devil had killed yet God had placed them to glorify him they are going to be resurrected in this evening in the name of Jesus and we are not going to stop believing whatever else that is going to come from. But we want to first release the healing power. How many were sick here? Or oh, having people who are sick? Jesus wants to perform. Rise up on your arms. Probably you are sick or you have someone who is sick. Right now, those who are sick and having people sick, you come here forward. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Yesu niyo mpamvu Yesu abantu bakoze ibitasanzwe bikorwa kuko bari bakene cyane bari babaye birenze urugero with the ones in need of Jesus that's why you will find people having done special things abanye bano ravuga ngo ubabaye niwe abanda urugi you always do according to your need uvuga ngo ico kikubabaje so whatever making you suffer kikubabaje kuruhe rwego wumva yuko at what level is making you suffering? Let's have, let's have the servants of God as I pray they shall also be raised. they will be laying hands upon you. Nimba ahurwaye ushora kuhakora hakore niko kwa ukiburyo If you can touch uh, wherever you are suffering if Nimba you can Nimba fituko kuiburyo koresha kuiburyo ni fituko kumoso If you can use your right hand and touch where you are suffering if Nimba ra hanu ushora gukora hakore If it's a place where you can touch Nimba ra udashora gukora If you can't touch Mukwizera uhereke mwami Yesu Just in faith show that place Alleluia. the Lord Dikaba kozi imana rero so let's have, the let's have the servants of God praying as we declare as we tell the Lord to heal. In the name of Jesus Christ. We command every kind of sickness. The diseases that the doctors can cure or cannot cure. We declare and command those kind of diseases within your body or within the bodies of those who are not here. Those sick people you are representing right now. We command those diseases to come out of their bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We command all those kind of diseases to shift the one who healed the other woman who was suffering for 12 years and all doctors having failed no one ever helped him but only Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of Jesus Christ we command all diseases to come out of your body we command healing